Uh, you're muted, David. I shouldn't be muted. Ah, can you it. hear me yeah, now? No, we can hear you. Yep, OK, uh, I'll just put my hand down. Um, OK, I'm just going to hopefully um, spotlight me because everything is going to be coming through this. Hopefully you should all see me full screen now quite, quite happily. Is that the case? We can see your camera, yes. That's excellent. Right. So I am David Martin. I am. Why have I still got a hand up there? That's bizarre. OK, let's take that hand down. Yes, I'm David Martin. I'm from Dundee, University of Dundee School of Life Sciences. And I'm going to be um, talking to you about audience engagement. Um, so if you just shuffle off to the side and throw some slides up. So, <clears throat> oh, that's interesting. I can see a gallery of people. Hopefully you can still see me full screen, but the most effective way of being able to understand what a, a learner knows is to be able to actually engage with them one-to-one. -one. And that's um, quite often a difficult thing to do when you have large classes. Um, with small groups, not too much of a problem. We're all familiar with the tutorial group. That's also um, a really effective way of being able to teach. And then we get to the lecture. And what happens when we get to the lecture? You ask a question and tumbleweed wandering across the class. Or if you have a, a particularly smart student in there, you may end up with what I call the um, black swan. So this is the, the student who always knows the answer to everything and always puts their hand up to answer every question. The problem with this, though, the problem with black swans is that you can end up thinking that all of the students in your class actually understand what you've been teaching them. And when we get on to the exam, as the uh, as the fog clears, you realise that actually you have one black swan and many, many who really haven't quite got the hang of what was going on. So, yeah, our lectures typically have been horrendously passive. Um, lots and lots of important things to remember um, and quite uh, quite quite um, difficult to really gauge whether students have understood them at all. So you can try to uh, use audience response systems. And that's really what I'm going to be going on and showing you something a little more experimental with that. You're probably familiar with things like Menti, etc. And um, there you've got various answers that the students can choose from, you know, an answer, potentially a better answer, obviously some, some clearly wrong answers and, you know, some that a student may doubt. And if you're anything like me, when you try and set these up, you realise it actually takes quite a lot of time to think up good questions and it takes even more time to think up good wrong answers. Horrendous. Um, and wrong answers that are actually meaningful and proper distractors takes a horrendous amount of time. Um, so you're spending most of your preparation time actually thinking up wrong answers. Now, this is where we get into co-creation. I'm sure it's not quite what the people who use that term mean, but yeah, I know the right answers. I want to understand the students' wrong answers. So let's co-create. Let's get the students, instead of that, to give me all of their answers, and then we can see what they are. OK, and I want to do that interactively with um, a class of 200 students who may be sat in a lecture theatre and or who may be online or who may be dispersed all around the place. So a few criteria here. Um, Firstly, it has to be anonymous so students can uh, participate without fear of being singled out. You know, they don't want to appear stupid in front of their peers, but they do want to challenge their knowledge. If you're a fan of Kirshner, then you'll understand from, from learning design, the key thing is to be able to um, test your knowledge and get feedback on it. It should be independent. So uh, if you ask the class altogether, then one student will answer and everyone's then seen the answer. OK, it doesn't work for the rest of the students. If it's going to be electronic, it needs to work immediately on what the students have in their hands, whether it's a laptop, 
a tablet or such like. And ideally, you want to see responses and feedback exactly where the questions are. And it needs to be completely flexible so you can deploy it as you wish. You could ask a question or not ask a quest question and not have to skip over slides saying like you might do in, in PowerPoint if you've embedded uh, various other ones. So um, I spent a bit of time, um, this actually starts well pre-COVID, developing something that would let me approach the topics that I actually do. So let me throw in a link again to the chat. We're going to do a demo and this is going to be quite dangerous. Um, now I appear to now have Lara on screen when I'm actually usurping her spot. So we've swapped. OK, hopefully you can still see me full screen. If you look in the chat, you'll see a link. Head off there and you'll see my rather prototype system. Um, let me just flick on to the next. As some of you have spotted I am using OBS. I have another scene. This shows you what you should see when you go to that link. Um, you can throw in a marker, click the, hopefully if it hasn't broken, like, as I said, this is experimental. So if you just click on where you happen to be, I'm in Dundee, which is up here, and I can then throw answers into um, to, the, to there. So if you, if you go along to that site, I'll give you a, a few moments, and then we can um, capture everybody's responses and see where you happen to be in the world. So this gives us a, a 30 seconds or so. I've got a few other examples. So this is quite a simple one. Put a point onto an image and it's completely, it's fully structured, but it's a completely open question. And this allows you to see how the students are responding and understanding in real time. Ooh, I don't seem to be getting a huge number of responses in there. Maybe people are having issues finding that link in the chat or I've thrown the wrong one in. Um, um, the number of people were asking about a code in the chat. There's not a code. Um, they've gone to the Ask My Class um, main website. But if you look in the chat, you will see um, a link that includes a direct link in. OK, so the uh, the code you put in, oh, have I, ah, looks like I may have missed something here. Give me one second. Ah, my fault. Okay, right, reload that link. You should be good. Okay. So I, I, I had that, I'll, I'll just uh, throw that link in again and David, I'll throw that in there. When I cloned the uh, session, I, I did a practice one um, before and I had it set up correctly, but I have to check my cloning because it didn't clone the allow auto enroll. I should set that as a default. OK, so now you should be able to get in there. Let's give you another 30 seconds. Brilliant, that's looking really good. OK, we'll, we'll run this time down. Now you can see that. Wow, this is a really good worldwide spread, actually. You're going to love this when you see it, because at the moment you can only see your answer. But if I stop the question, I'm going to stop it now because there's lots. Well, I'll wait till the end. OK, I've stopped the question. You can no longer response, respond. And I'm going to um, hopefully show you where everybody is in the world. Ooh. Right, hopefully that will push back to you. So, so um, oh, I've just run that question again. That wasn't what I wanted to do. Let's get back. OK, like I said, this is experimental. I do have a few. Um, how do I get the countdown sound effect? I have a little box that my microphone feeds through that I can add things in. OK, so that's collaborative map, but that's a bit um, that's simple. Let's try a different one. If you are from the UK, you will find this easier. You should now see this on your screen coming up ever so, ever so shortly. Come on through. Doodly -dum. Um, I hope that's coming through. I can't see it coming through on my monitor there. Let me just check that. 
oh yes it is it's just taking a moment um this is experimental it's running on a a, a virtual server so this time instead of putting a dot on you can draw a line freeform lines okay just mark out the border between scotland and england okay so if you want to add another um, line segment you've got to click the plus to um, finish the current one so you can draw a nice line segment in there so so this now becomes a little more complex in how you can uh, actually probe to see whether the students understanding in that I've tried to pick uh, examples that are really generic if you've got no idea that all of this blob um, on the side there is not just called England. Don't worry, it's something that those of us in Scotland are quite used to um, and cringe and grind teeth and so on. And I'm sure it's exactly the same for those in Wales as well. So you can add, add those kind of line markers on there, should you so desire. Um, this may be one of those things where it is prototype, it does fall over at times. Um, so I don't actually have any responses. My system is falling apart. Oh, dearie me. Um, but this is OK. There you go. You can see the responses there uh, or actually my guidance onto the um, particular thing. It's just taking a little while to get things out to people. Um, I have to it's the first time I've run it with such a large set of people. Hey, Dave, I got, think we're actually we're on time now. I'm sorry. Um, for, nearly. Uh, I started three minutes late, Phil, because of your your things. Can I have another another two examples just to show through? Yeah. Um, OK, so let's get let's get a bit more complex. Um, if I wanted to do this as a multiple choice question, I'd have to pick a restricted number of moves. OK, so this next question that's up, it's where would you move in chess? So you, you could just draw a particular line um, on this, an arrow to show the direction of one piece to another. I see somebody's got it. Yep. And you can put loads of those different movements on there. There we go. I can start to see loads of stuff coming out. Ideally, you should be able to see this when I send that back to you. Um, so you can see this then not just allows you to see, oh, have they got the right answer? But I can use this to promote discussion. I can get their thoughts and feedback and nobody has to own up to doing the really stupid things. I'm going to stop this one. Sorry, folks, for those who are still doing it. And I'm going to move on to the next one. Um, I obviously have work to do on my analysis. Um, if you ever te teach histology, medicine and so on, um, you find people don't come labelled A, B, C, D. So here's an ultrasound. You know, can you identify a particular feature or an idea? You know, is this precancerous? If so, where is the issue? Um, you know, what's going on? So this allows you then to take that small group feel. You can see how you do this in a small group with two or three students. You can take that to an audience of many hundreds or even thousands of students. OK, so hopefully you like the potential of this. It is prototype. If you're interested in suffering my code and my bugs as well, then get in contact. Um, happy to take any questions. Thank you, David. And I think everyone, um, I think we should all applaud you for, for trying this. And, you know, I think we do have to recognise it is in prototype and sometimes um, these things happen, but it's um, I think it's it looks great. It really does. Um, so thank you for taking the time to to to, to be here today to show us. Um, we've probably got time for one quick question. So if anyone did have a question, would they be able to raise their hand, please? I'll put a link into the chat to an email address if you are interested. Yeah, ideally you should see the results. Um, I think I have a, a minor glitch that has kept crept in that is where it is not behaving that I've never seen before. I've noted it in my list of emergent features, as I like to call it, or bugs. Yeah. 
Well, as, as we say, sometimes these things happen, but I think the work that you've done um, has been great. So thank you. Yeah, it's really aimed to uh, try to allow me to ask and get responses in the way that I want rather than being restricted by the tools. So I wrote my own.